Today we're gonna do, we're at Josh's shop, believe it or not. We're in the back of Josh's shop right now for good reason. We got this big bad boy out. And uh, this, I would say, is probably your regular Colombian red tail boa. I don't think it's a guy, Anna, just because of the colors and the darker red on the tail and the patterns and the saddles, it looks like a regular Colombian red tail. Now, Generally speaking, these guys can get pretty large. It is a boa. Um, they do live birth. I would say that your largest boa, at least the largest that I've seen in person, is probably about 12 feet. 12 feet's a big boa. These guys kind of max out, I would say at probably eight, and I'm peeling shit off, so don't mind me. I'm being picky. But uh, you can see there's a couple problems with a snake. Number one, he does not have a full shed, no clean shed. It's a little flaky. And then he's got massive scars here. So I can guarantee you that whoever owned this snake, and this was dropped off at Josh's shop. Josh did not do this. This is not one of Josh's snakes. It's a rescue. And it's a rescue for multiple reasons. Number one, we'll point out the massive scars. Let me see if I could find that again. There's one right there. So these massive scars that you see, let me see if I can get better. Here, there's a good one. So this massive scar, I can almost guarantee you, I'll bet my left nut, that the guy that owned this snake probably fed it a rabbit and probably fed it a rabbit once a week. Now, this snake will eat frozen thaw just fine. Obviously, he fed the snake live. Why do I know that? There's a gigantic scar that looks like a bite from a rodent and a very large rodent, so that's gonna be a bite from a rabbit. And there's multiple scars on him. It's not just the one. So he did this repetitively. Now, this is why I always tell you guys this. On the scale of snakes, I would say that a Colombian red tail boa would probably be a beginner species. Great snake to own for a young child if you buy one as a baby. They can be a little bitey at first, but if you work with them, they come around. You can see this guy's pretty sweet. Now he does have a gigantic face. He's got some shedding issues. He's probably got multiple eye caps on there. So you can see that silver eyelid. That should not look like that at all. Like he looks like fucking is there something else I can help with? No, Siri. Please shut up. You're ruining the episode. I mean, look at the eyes right there. So usually we call him in blue. He looks like the fucking silver surfer. So I can guarantee you, like I'm gonna try and help him out here. Bianca, you got nails? No, I've got them all. Can you go inside and ask for a small set of songs real quick? Poor favor. So I can guarantee you he's got multiple layers over his eyes. So the reason is, is because number one, this snake is forcing a shed probably far too often. And it's catching through his little scales here on the face. Usually this happens a lot with like cobras and stuff just because of the facial structure. Usually we have some large scales on the head of the cobras. All the elapids have these gigantic scales and it kind of buries the eyeball itself. So oftentimes they have problems with the shedding. Rarely do we see this with the pythons. Not that it can't happen, but you got little tiny scales all around the eyeball, so it shouldn't really happen. And I've never in my ever in my life have I seen the eyes that silver. And silver surfer status. This is some ridiculous shit. So on top of having multiple scars, 
but I'm gonna try and be gentle here because we don't wanna hurt his eyeball, but eventually this will turn into an infection. See if I can snag it with these little tongies here. Probably not. Might be able to slide it though with the rough edge. All right, so I'm gonna get to you. So the guy probably fed a rabbit once a week. Why? Sometimes people think it's cool. I don't know. The live feeding for me, if I absolutely have to do it, I will. It is not my favorite thing in the world. I don't enjoy watching it. And if I don't have to do it, I'm not going to do it. With a boa like this size, he'll eat frozen thawed no problem. Now they're going to put him on a diet. And I'm actually taking one of these guys home that's in far worse condition as this guy if you can believe it or not. But um, it's gonna take a lot of time. So you can see his mouth, he's got a little bit of redness, so there's some mouth rot starting. If you look at the top there too, there's a little petechia that's broken uh, blood vessels. Probably uh, the beginning stages of a respiratory infection somewhat, but also probably just because of the fact that this snake is so obese, that what happens is, is number one, he's not gonna be super mobile. Number two, it's already gonna be hard enough for him to breathe. If I were to cut the snake open, not that I'm gonna, but if I were to cut the snake open, what you would see, if I opened them up, as you would see thousands of little, what looks like marshmallows, just placed on top of each other over and over and over again. And you would see that all the way down the snake. And what it is, is little fat pockets that are built up inside the snake. So it's not gonna be like if I took it out of my own body, it looks a little bit different and I've dealt with this before. And basically what it did was this is a gorgeous snake Obviously a friendly snake, so I'm sure the person cared, but caring with food isn't always the best thing. Why? Because you end up with problems like this. You know, the snake's not really shedding well. He's pushing out a shed probably twice, three times a month because he's continuously growing, getting a rabbit once a week. And not every snake will overeat, but you always run the risk. Why? Because in the wild, these guys are built to get a meal when they can. They don't know when the next meal is coming. So if you offer it every single week, some snakes will take that meal every single week. So it's up to us as keepers to research and make sure that we maintain the weight of the snake that we want. Now a 12 foot boa, which is the largest I've ever seen, was still skinnier than this boa here. It was wild caught. It was brought over from, I want to say that was a Guyana red tail bow that was brought over was about 12 feet long literally like from head to tail 12 feet solid 12 feet and still didn't have the mass that's, that this snake does you should never see this ever 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 but that's the problem with the hobby in general is people are used to seeing big thick animals they want to see a big thick animal they think it makes it look healthy you'll never catch a red tail boa like this in the wild it's never going to happen never in a million years is an animal like this going to be able to get the food enough to be able to reach this size. I mean, you're talking about maybe, I would say five and a half feet all together. Beautiful colors, beautiful snake, just all around damaged. Like you shouldn't see the rolls like that. You shouldn't see any creases, crevices, anything like that. The head's oversized, everything's oversized. And unfortunately enough, no matter what we do, probably about five to six years of the snake is done so. Like the, the back end of his life is, is pretty much taken from him just because of the fact that he was probably shoved in a small enclosure obviously he's had some the, 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 let me learn how to speak obviously so he's got issues with shedding so there was probably issues with humidity so i'm gonna guess he was probably in a glass tank probably shoved in a small glass tank which is why you see on the certain side of his body he's got these rolls that just don't go away even if we stretch them out they still remain right there so he's probably been folded up in a circle for the better part of his life so I'm gonna guarantee you maybe 20 gallon, 40 gallon tank tops, throwing a live rabbit in there, which is why he's scarred to ship, because of course the rabbit's gonna fight back every single time. He's not gonna be able to strike in the head every single time he's gonna miss at some point because he's in a small, tiny enclosure. So it all goes back to everything we say on every damn episode. Always research what you get your, you know, what you're getting yourself into. This is a beautiful snake to have. He's a good snake, obviously. He's not mad. He's definitely got rest, but I can hear the wheezing. Let's see if you guys can hear it. Can you do that for me one more time, bud? Let's see if we can get it on the phone. Where's the mic? And a little mouth gapage right there. You can see the snot. So definitely some beginning signs of respiratory infection, which we're gonna have to treat now on top of everything else, which is actually gonna be harder to do because the batril itself is actually distributed through the entire, um, how can I say this? 
it goes through the entire system and it's based off the weight of the snake and it doesn't work as well with an overweight snake so we're working against obviously morbid obesity so the snake can't breathe already then we have a small touch of respiratory already happening with the petechia on the top of the mouth the shed problem and then whatever else we're going to have as far as putting them on a diet like the snake's going to want to eat he's used to eating once a week and at the end of the day it's our responsibility to make sure that if that sneak eats once a week that we're controlling the meals as well as the size of the meals so that we don't overdo it i'll get back to you guys to finish up this episode in one second when the damn coke truck does its damn thing boom is that coke they always Oh, all right, back. The Coca-Cola guy was, uh, he had a big smile on his face. He's like, uh-uh, not for me, boy. <sighs> Tried to offer him the snake. He doesn't want it. All right, so we just wanted to give you guys something quick uh, so we can bounce back into this YouTube thing here. But I thought this was important to talk about. I called Josh to make sure it was okay. The guy still frequents the shop. Nice guy. This is just a common case of what we see often. I'm sure the guy will love the snake. Don't get me wrong. The snake is obviously tame. He obviously handled this snake. But when you don't do your research and then you get your information from here or there or you're just guessing and checking and, you know, somebody says the snake's got to eat once a week and you keep bouncing up the food, bouncing up the food matter is the snake is sweet, but we just shaved off literally half of his life. So it's very sad. This is going to be a very long term rescue rehab. I might take this guy home myself. I have another one inside that I'm going to be taking home that you guys are going to see very soon. That's far worse than this guy here. Uh, not so much as the weight, but you're gonna see the other problems we're dealing with. So there's one more that we gotta show you. Um, but for right now, what can I say, man? You guys gotta do your research. We're gonna peel the, the silver off the eyes real quick when I get inside, so we might be able to show you that. If I can't get to it, then you won't see it. Don't hate me for it. But keep in touch, guys. We're gonna be slamming up the channel here real quick. So we're gonna be trying to do back-to-back -back videos as quickly as possible. Everything is going good at the household. We got shit going forward. Thank you to the Patreons. Thank you to everybody watching. Thank you for your patience. I hope you guys appreciate this episode. Again, a beginner reptile, and this is why I hate saying beginner, because there's no such thing as a beginner reptile. Yes, and the fact of, uh, is it a good snake for a beginner person to own? Absolutely, but there's no such thing as beginner husbandry. No such thing as beginner care. So all of that is expert and advanced, but this is a good snake for you kids to own. You just got to watch what you're doing, pay attention, and make sure that you provide the best life for your homies because food is not always the best life for your homies. They feel good to feed your animals, but when your guy dies, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years before it's supposed to, it's a very sad thing. And right now with everything that he's got going on, it's going to be a hard thing to get on top of. So we're not just battling respiratory, which would be easy. We're not just battling a shedding problem, which would be easy. We're not just battling multiple scars. We're also battling dieting a snake that can literally hold this weight for months and months and months. So we're literally going to not feed this guy for probably the next half a year, maybe even eight months. So imagine that, not eating for eight months. And he's going to be just fine. Don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, but he needs to lose some weight and we're going to get him some exercise, try and do the best we can. But what you see is what you get. That's probably it. All right, my boys, we're going to go try and fix this snake up. We'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Boom. Out.